It's 100 Hip Hop at R&B. Of course, yours truly, Lorenzo Ice-T Thomas. And the show is Time We Reveal. And this show is a show. And I have to basically tell all my guests what the premise of the show is. Because, you know, uh, the lady you see over here. Oh, wrong screen. Right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> I've known her for over a decade, right? But working in radio, a lot of times I may not have had the opportunity to have her on my show or because uh, for other, whatever reason. So basically, a lot of times I didn't have any idea. And when I met her, I had no idea what she did. So I have a lot of friends who are really good friends, but I don't know, you know, what their occupation is. <laughs> and, and I don't take the time out to find out. So right. this show, the purpose of this show is to basically give them that platform also for me to find out more about them. And just basically my way of saying, hey, after a while, time will reveal. You like that? You like that? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so that, yes. is, that is the purpose of this show. Right. Now, I have watched this young lady grow from a woman whose imagery could activate an audience with a simple smile or a sexy shake you know she she can intimately like draw you in with her radiant personality huh uh she she makes the most simple i should say most difficult dance routines seem simple <laughs> and if you're on her ig you know she is off the chain off the hook she's just bananas she's lit whatever adjective you want to you want to hear you want to describe or use to describe this young lady but to my audience i'd like to introduce to you my friend actress portia coleman hey woo, woo, woo. Well. Woo, woo. Hey. and the crowd goes wow <laughs> I need one of those. How are you, sweetheart? How are you? I am good. I am so good. Under the circumstances, of course, we're all having to stay home and having to stay healthy and well, and I'm doing just that. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm great. You know, you got to make the best of your time and be productive. So right, right. You know, yeah. I, I kind of thought the next time I would see you would uh -huh. be at Essence, but right. because of the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, let's no take a essence moment. for us. No <laughs> essence for us. Can can, can you on. believe this? Because I think it's been the last two years we hung out together, right? The last two. The last yeah, two last years two years. We were there. Right, it right. Because I'm like, I love essence because it's always like my pre-birthday turn up. My birthday is July 12th, so every time we're there around the four, we're having a good time. Right. That's like my prelude, and I'm like. You mean it's canceled? Like I know. Oh, I might have to have a Zoom party like a lot of the rest of the people. I just knew by July we'd be mm -hmm, doing this mm -hmm. thing, but I don't see it happening in LA. So it's like, yes, that's the last time I saw you. But we always have such a good time. It's yes, we do. So yes, we do. Yeah. And of course, you can uh, you can see the pictures right now. Me and Portia yes. hanging out together <laughs> at Essence, like, having yeah. having a ball there. But we're gonna miss so out. But your fun. birthday is in July. My birthday yes. is in June. And yes. where we met was at my birthday bash, That's the Jamaica birthday. Jump Off. That's right. Man. Y'all ain't know. I go by the name of Lupe Fiasco. Hey, man. How long ago was that? I but I would believe that was because we've known each other over a decade oh, now. So that was like probably before? either 2007, 2008. Cause, yeah, that maybe 2008. 2008. 2008. 2008. I, I believe it was that oh was the year that, that you came and had a great okay. time. And of course, okay. I have to ask you, yeah. what are some of your most <laughs> vivid um, memories? Because you, I mean, you, you, you young girl, but you yes. were young. I mean, uh, so. <laughs> I think people think I'm a lot older than what I am just based on me having older friends. Like, I have right. an older brother. My mom was older when she had me. Uh -huh. uh, for my homegirl, Claudia, that is the reason why I was even down there. I right. just have older friends, so I'm really not old. And again, old is only, it's about how you feel anyway. So like mm, I said, true. age is something about a number. Let's just keep mm -hmm, that one. Mm -hmm. But very much so. When I was down there, it was my first time in Jamaica. So that's why I'll never Oh, my goodness. Me. Wow. Okay. Never been down there. And I was like, something called the Jamaica Jump Off. When you got off the plane and at that resort, it was jumping wow. off. What you say? It's the man right. I remember 
the white party because, mm-hmm. of course, I love all white. I think all white parties just look so amazing, seeing everybody dressed in their clothes and just, it's so synchronized. Seeing that music, the DJ. Mm-hmm. DJ. I mean, you're hearing songs that, that you don't even really hear. Like, in LA, right. it's like, we hear a lot of, of course, like you hear the Drake, you'll hear Beyonce, you'll hear all the, the hot folks. Mm-hmm. You know, the people that can pay to be on radio. Let's be real, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know that's the whole game. We're going to talk music, too. Uh, exactly. Okay. So when you go out there and you hear songs around the world that you haven't heard before, from like reggae artists, Jamaican artists, from, I mean, everywhere around the world, it was just amazing just to see everybody that had come to that jump off in this mm-hmm. music and the culture that was out there. Right, and right. it was something I'll never forget. And I'll have a funny story too, like if you want a funny story that I No, have. no, no, go ahead. This is this is the platform. Tell is that it? story now. What is your story, I Portia? will never forget. And I have a picture somewhere, but I got to find it like on a hard drive or somewhere. In the pool, right? So pool jumping off, everybody got their drinks. Mind you, I don't even drink alcohol. So if you saw me with anything, it was definitely like a virgin margarita or pina colada or something. Okay. So out there turning up in the pool and I had a two-piece bikini on. So I, you know, I like the ones that you can like self-adjust. You got the little side ties, a little back tie. All I know is that I'm being cute. I'm like, well, I'm gonna go jump in the water. Go to jump in the water and my bikini pops. What? All I know is that I got up and I was like, oh, it felt cold. <laughs> <laughs> it felt cold down there. I, I don't think I saw that. I, <laughs> but it was in the middle of the so in the middle of the pool party. It floated up. Okay. It floated up. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god! And I went to grab it. I was like, it broke from the side, so I couldn't even like. I was like, oh my god, Claudia! I was like, yo, my 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 bikini just broke, and she was like, hey, man, oh my god. <laughs> like I'm like no I had to figure something out so I literally like stepped into it had to tie the fabric to uh-huh. like the whole other side because it had detached so I'm in the pool having a good time trying to make it not look obvious that I I was literally just everything out underwater like wow oh my god wow that's it that's so fun that's Nobody funny that's funny yeah funny. yeah we did yeah. 11 years of the Jamaica jump oh. 11 of them 11 and years? yeah yeah what year yeah. was the first year that you actually did it 2002 2002 oh, I, was so late to the party. <laughs> I was based I was based in um, Washington DC that's where it started and in Got fact you. Portia yes unfortunately out of the 11 yeah the year you came was the worst <laughs> you kept saying that you were like <laughs> we always have so many people out here and I'm like well, yeah. this is a nice amount of folks. But yeah, yeah. I, well, what happened that year? What it was did- just, we, 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 we left hedonism, right? Oh, so we used to be there. That was, that was one. So we left there and went to another resort. Because when I first came up with the concept, the show is Time and Reveal. So what it does, it yeah. reveals a lot about the people that I'm talking to, but also reveals a lot about myself. Of so, course. you know, so, in D.C., you know, it's a very competitive market, radio market, right? So I'm on radio, I'm, on, I'm doing radio, I'm doing BET at the same yeah. time, and my birthday bash oh my is coming, my birthday's coming up, right? Yeah. So, you know, everyone does the birthdays in the clubs, the hotel lounges, and some place, right. you know, small. So I was like, People you know what? You gotta do it different. I gotta be gotta different. Be different. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta find some place to do it. So a friend of mine, exactly. Cooley, who might be, she's in the room right now, she okay. is... Um, She's the one that said, hey, Lorenzo, why don't you try hedonism? And I was like, wait a minute, ain't that the nudist place? They be like, walking around naked? (laughs) She was like, yeah. She said, but it's not what you think it is. I was like, but I'm thinking, as soon as I get off the bus, I got to take my clothes off. (laughs) That was not the case. Like, you know, same example, if the the resort was 100 yards, the, the, the nude part of the resort was 10 It years. was somewhere else. Exactly. Absolutely. So, yes. so basically, after doing it there, uh, it ran its course. So I needed to find someplace Another else, place. right? Got you. So, okay. you know, but because me being different, I needed to do my birthday bash somewhere other than that. And that's why I chose Jamaica. You know what I mean? So Got it's like, it. no, do something different and give some okay. people a reason to go to Jamaica. So to go to Jamaica. After about six years at Hedo, or five or six, I'm not sure exactly, can't remember right now, yeah. we chose Grand Lido Braco, which Hedo was the only resort that I could find that catered toward singles. 
every other resort was for families or for couples. Right. right. So I needed something that was for singles and keto. I was I, every year I kept looking for someplace else because of the for stigma that was that of was attached course. to it. Right. Yeah. So we found Grand Grand Lido Brocco, but that resort wouldn't allow us the freedom to do the things that we were accustomed to do. So, gotcha. you oh know. My. God. Yeah, but even though they had a nude side, which right. was <laughs> right, I saw that. You know, I was yes, like, yeah, yeah. I looked over the balcony and I just saw just. <laughs> I was like, right, because oh. I had, I think I had you booked over there. Your room was on the nude side, right? We were on that side. Exactly, when I exactly. The hotel, I saw a right. couple walking by, just like all hang out. And yeah. I was like, oh, it goes right. down like this. Yes, I, I was I, over there. I remember one time. I came out of my room, right? Uh -huh. And I looked out into the ocean. It must have been about 20 to 30 women all in the ocean. Oh. Nothing on, right? So yeah. someone said, my sister was out there. She was like, oh my God. And she jumped down, covered herself <laughs> up, right? So like, oh, no. somebody said, yeah, come on in and drop them right now. So I'm like, you like what you what did you? Uh, uh, no, I, I, I was like, I was like God, right, right, with about God. thirty. I was like, uh, now nah, I'm going this way. Exactly. <laughs> I said, I'm different. going in this direction. I gotta go there because they yeah. were like, go ahead, you know, <laughs> drop it right here. Because I never did either, and and again, not that it was a problem, but I was just like, and, and I think people have it like twisted when it comes to those kind of beaches. I didn't see nobody even my age I was nude on the beach. Most of the people that I saw out my room uh -huh. were like 45, 50, 70 year olds, mm -hmm. couples letting it all hang out. So that's yo, almost like- Yo, the white, the white folks be getting it in, girl. They right. getting it in. We, like, that's what I was like, yeah. maybe it's not our thing, but it's theirs. So <laughs> I was just watching. And then like yeah. the last day I was there, it was late at night. I was on the sand, I was like me by myself. I'm like, oh yeah, I was on the nude beach and I was all nude, but nobody right. saw it, it wasn't no thing. But, but you got a chance yeah. to experience that. And if you're just checking in, we're talking to Portia Coleman. The show is Time Will Reveal. Now, Portia, tell me about this television show called The Hustle, because I see a lot of familiar faces in this. Yes, a lot of familiar faces. The Hustle was an amazing show on Fuse. Um, I like to say it was a little bit ahead of its time just because it was a show about hip hop in New mm -hmm. York City. It was about up and coming rappers trying to find their way through the rap game. Um, and Fuse just didn't really know what to do with the show. So they put mm -hmm. it out, I guess right. it did good ratings wise, but it was just a little too early and they didn't understand it. But the 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 director of the show, Prentice Penny, is also the, the co-producer and co-creator of Insecure on HBO. Ah. And if you guys saw that clip and you'll recognize Yolan, who's okay. also on Insecure. Okay. But then if you see my other homeboy on the show, he was actually on Ballers playing the best friend of John David. So it's mm. all kind of like a 360 degree of separation in regards to how we all worked together and how we all became familiar with one another. But check it out. This role was so, I mean, it was so much fun. She's like a pesky reporter where she wanted what she wanted. And it showed the ups and downs of hip hop, how I got a girlfriend, baby mama, but this reporter, she wants what she wants and she's not going to settle for any rest? Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look. Anybody else for you shout out? Yeah. Shout out to the shout out. Right. Shout out to the shout out. <laughs> okay, so before we start the interview, I just want to let you know that I'm a fan. Just talking about you a fan. I am a fan. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. But I'm into more of like the production side. Okay. <laughs> um, Tell me, what do you think is going to be the first thing? I mean, obviously the Chuck English joint is what it is, but I produce a few that I like, like uh, Raise Up, Knock Me Down is Crazy, That Life is Cool. Okay, that's like the fifth one you played, right? Yeah. yeah. Totally reminded me of the con game on your Burrow Music mixtape. Wow, you're <laughs> taking me back. Yes, I told you. I am a fan. <laughs> yes, it looks like. I mean, I don't want to hog all the time, though. You know, I'm sure my man D got his favorite, so. No, no I mean, I don't want to interrupt y'all. I mean, do your thing. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm going to let y'all do y'all thing. I think I got what I wanted for right now. You had not had enough? I mean, it's free, so I'm going I'm to load up. OK, look, you never did tell me who you listened to growing up. Well, I listened to? I mean, a lot of people. DMX, Nas, RZA. Oh, I was a big Pete Rock and CL Smooth fan. Wait, what do you know about Pete Rock and CL Smooth? What do I know about? What do you know about? I know C. plenty. <laughs> I know plenty. 
Hey, um, I was just coming to say bye. You leaving? Yep. I could walk you out. No, I'm good. Do your thing. Who is that? Baby moms. Oh. Y'all together? I don't know. You gotta ask her. Okay. I think I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. Um, can we try to finish the interview later? Cool. I'll, I'll find out what's good for D. Oh, well, D's not available. We could just do it. I started very early in the world of, like, here's the show. But my first official job, guys, don't go Google it because you're going to die laughing just like <laughs> I did. My very first job was when I was seven years old in the movie Friday at the ice cream truck next to Making Good. You were there? I was there. What? I was okay. There. Okay. I did yes. not know that. Yeah. I, I got to go oh. back and see it. Everyone remembers Megan. Uh, <laughs> right. So she's right here because we have the same agent at the time and I just got started. So she's in the front and I'm like literally to her on camera. You'll see I'm to her left. Uh -huh. And little ponytail, blue shirt, first job ever. But I'm like, this is so cool. I'm out of school. I get to work with other kids. I loved it. Right. So I just was like, ooh, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Went for acting class, booked like two, three commercials just like that. Mm -hmm. Had to get a sad card in less than a year. So I got a quick start, you Man. know, in the entertainment business. And for those mm -hmm. that don't know what a sad card is, it's just right, basically right. like a union that basically controls and helps the actors get more money for their jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, there's non-union and there's union. So if you see a television show, there's hundreds of people in the background crossing, doing different stuff. Those are what they call background actors. And right. they are sometimes either non-union or background union. Mm -hmm. So when you're union is when you get the dialogue or when you have, you know, if it's under five lines and you're a co-star, if it's more than five, then you're a guest star, if you're a series regular. So I joined a union at that point to where it's like I had to be principal. So I was doing Ellen's show, Boston Public, all kind of stuff, like as a teenager, uh, the Gregory Hines show, everything. I was doing, wow. I was a young actor, wow. so, I, wow. so well. I, I know a little bit about that because I'm SAG yeah. after and I'm financial yeah. core. So oh, yeah. being core, so I can fine. I can do both, right? Which yes. is great for me living in a state like Florida. When I was Absolutely. in Washington, D.C., it helped me out so I could do union and non-union work. So when you're talking, you, you know I'm counting your, your money, right? You know I'm already in them those I'm, <laughs> those residual checks. I'm like, no, it's like it's like yeah, but residuals. When you're an extra, you don't get residuals. I know, extra. I know, but you know. But you can, and if you start thinking about like that's a long time in the business. But some people think just because you've been working a long time means that you were getting real big money back then. Mm -hmm. No, like mm -hmm. to be an extra on a set, you got a couple hundred dollars. Right. Not right. even like even now, like I said, every year the rates are are increasing, or every three or four years when they have a new vote wages increase that's Your right changes. so it's like you know my day rate back then was non-negotiable because i was an extra mm -hmm. but now 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 but now 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 hello. We, and, and speaking of now <laughs> yeah you you are you're on lockdown but i can see yeah. why you have so much fun on instagram yeah. i mean yeah. you basically use that as uh, I, I guess you know if you were in the house and you had a sibling or a cousin that you Absolutely. could play with, your camera is that. So I applaud yeah. you for everything yeah. that you're doing on IG. I said, I, when I, was, when I watch you, I'm like, she at home alone. <laughs> she's, she's she at home, but she is having a good time and she's inviting everyone into her world. Into, so, so many times people are like, you must be bored. I'm like, but they're like, you must be bored, but this is amazing. Like, yes. what you're doing is so funny. And yes, like, yes. I have so much in my head. Like, it's really crazy. Like, I've been, like, just to show the variety of stuff, I've been mm -hmm. on NYPD Blue, but I've been mm -hmm. a comedian on Wild and Out. And then right. I've been on Switched at Birth, but then I've been on a show on a ABC, it's ABC, you know, but I've been on NBC for Good Girls. It's like, right. it's been a lot of variety of different stuff that I've done, and I can play a lot of different characters. So there's so many different voices that I can do. I do voiceovers. People don't even know, like, a mm -hmm. video game that you probably played last year, I was a voice in it. I was a narrator wow. for. Wow. Like, I do so much stuff. So for me being at home, you end up, like, having to be creative and think of things that you could do for yourself, because you really can. I'm not mm -hmm. stopping doing voiceovers. Every other day, I have a voiceover audition. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Work so, so you mentioned uh, quite a few uh, things that you were in. Is there yes. any particular... Because you do more television than you have done film, right? A lot of a lot yeah, of TV. Yeah, more, more TV. Yeah, so what do people what do what do people recognize you for? 
Is there anything in particular? Yes, in particular, it depends on the demographic. So okay. automatically, our people, they know the Parkers. They're like, okay. you right. that girl. You was on a Parkers. Oh my God, you that girl. <laughs> and that movies in the house. Like they always know me from the Parkers. But also they know me from a movie called Janky Promoters, which is with Exactly, Mike right. You know, right. Uh, so many funny. I mean, uh, Tiffany Haddish was in there, Young Jeezy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We had a, a, a funny all-star cast on that one, so they recognized me for that. But then if you talk to like, you know, maybe a 20-something-year-old techie guy out of Silicon Valley, he knows me from the show, Silicon right. Valley. He's like, mm-hmm. oh my God, you that girl? <laughs> Mocha Chino. Not this guy. Mocha Chino. She is my gift to you. you. Wanna smoke weed? Hey, can somebody play something with a beat, please? I'll go make a playlist. Yeah, actually, some oh, some water uh, cooking, I think. Mujhe dusre kamre mein jana hai. Mujhe nis. Yeah, I don't pay for it, so barking up the wrong tree here. God, I hate Palo Alto. <clears throat> Hello again. Y- you know, I, d- I don't actually have a ton of dance music, but I turned the bass way up. Baby, you're getting a private show. Hey, what the fuck? Okay, there's the butt time. So, what do you guys do here? Oh, um, uh, we're, we're mostly working on a lossless compression algorithm. A what? It makes files smaller, doesn't matter. Uh, it's called Pied Piper. It- it's gonna be famous, you'll, you'll know it eventually. Stop, stop! Oh Stop. Someone is paying me. Okay, I didn't come just to dance on your boner all night for free. I was not erect. I, that was, I was, it was only being polite. So you were being polite when you said that you love me? First off, I said you seemed like someone I could fall in love with, and yes, also politeness. Reggie, pay the lady. What? Why, why should I pay her? I didn't hire her. I, I didn't even get a lap dance. This is a company party and you're the CEO, so pony up. No, if anyone should pay her, it should be you. Doug. Help the CEO find his money. No, 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 we don't, uh, we don't need help. I, ha- I know where it is. I, it's here. It's mm-hmm. here. Do you, I don't know, do you accept Amex? You damn right I do. Put 100 on there for yourself, Mocha. Oh, well, that's an expensive boner. Not a boner. And we're back here on Time to Reveal. Myself, Lorenzo, yeah. Ice-T Thomas, and my good friend, Portia Coleman. That's Girl, right, in the building. You, you, are do- you are working. Yeah. I mean, that, that is a good thing. Now, is there yeah. something, I, I called you or I text you because yeah. one of my favorite shows, and I want to show the clip on here, is okay. HBO's Ballers. How much Ballers. fun did you have shooting that? Ballers! Oh, my God. It was so fun. Ballers. I didn't get to work with The Rock or anything, but John David Washington was so amazing to work with. He's an incredible actor. And for those that don't know, he's uh, Denzel Washington's son. Correct. But I love it how he just wants to pave his own way and, and sets his own bar high. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for being an actor. So after we got done doing a scene and stuff was kind of cool on set, because he's a method actor, truly. Like if he's is a he scene, really? Yeah. He's oh wow. Scene, like, so what know. what 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 did y'all do prior to what type of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> show prep uh, did you do no, prior exactly. to the scene? <laughs> but we didn't do anything. That's the thing. Okay. Like, we actually started in order that day. So therefore, the scene where we first meet is how we got started. So therefore, I okay. saw him on the other side. He saw me. And at that point, they say actors come in, we're blocking, but he's over there, I'm here. So we didn't even say hi at that point. So we weren't in the trailer or nothing like that together because uh-huh. he had his own room, I had mine. So when we got there and started to do that shot where I'm kind of like flirting with him and see him over there, it's kind of like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, that was mm-hmm. our first time really right. actually seeing each other. Right. And then by the time that we're upstairs and we're having a little party, like we already started talking. We know some of the same people were the same age and, and friends that he went to high school with at wow. his school is right around the corner from my school. So we ended up, having a great time and in, in, in conversating on a lot of stuff. So it kind of just grew on set. But in between shots, like he's very much of like, okay, there's a scene where he's got to get mad and upset. He's like writing with a pen and a pad, like his emotions, what he's thinking, what he's going mm. through. Like, like very Whoa. much like a- Wow. Yeah. So no, it was really dope to watch his process. And that's I asked different. Him, that, that's you know, different. Yeah. He, yeah, he had to pick that up from his dad. Like, he had to pick that up from his dad. I, I would assume. Yeah. I would assume so. His dad and, and even his mother, I mean, you know, Pauletta, like, she's an actress as well. And I true, love how true. anytime mm-hmm. someone says, oh, his dad is in South Washington, he's like, no, my mother, Pauletta. My mother and my father are why I'm here. And, and they wow. are both actors. So I love just how he gives them both credit for just, for his 
blessing of talent, but also just how dedicated he is. I love it. Mm, let's take a look at this, yeah. that scene in Ballers. Here we go. Oops. Real. Right, let me see that giraffe pose. That sexy giraffe. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Oh yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Hold up. Boom. Oh yes. <laughs> it's all about the angle. Yeah, and I got that cover. Ricky. Man, leave me alone, Dennis. Ricky, answer me, boy. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell is wrong with you? Meet the parents. Regina, this is Dennis. Dennis, this is Regina. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you want something to drink? What, what, what you got, that honey? Yeah. <laughs> Hell no, he don't want no drink. And you lost your damn shit. Come on, man. Why you tripping? I'm just having a good time. Ain't nothing going on. Oh, so you back to being Dirty Ricky. Just make sure you leave him here. In case you haven't noticed, he is pretty depressed. Oh, we've noticed. You a canary, man. You didn't leave me no choice, nigga. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Ricky. If anybody understands shame, it should be you, old man. Look, I made my mistakes, but you ain't got to make the same ones. My choice, all right? Y'all ain't finna judge me while I'm just having a drink with a friend. Your head's 17, and you shacked up with some hoe you don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch what you say. Please, yourself up, Ricky. I'm standing. No, no. We're going home, Ricky. Yeah, that's shitty. Ain't shit left to be said, except you pathetic. Rude. Oh yeah, I remember that scene. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I do. So I text you right after that scene. Yeah. I'm like, girl, girl, girl. <laughs> girl? So Whoa, now yeah. because you you know, I mean, I've seen you grow over the years, right? So yeah. it's just yeah. like, so I gotta ask you, you know, okay. what what are you doing to keep that body? tight because if i i know i'm not the only one that's asked you the abs right, is tight you're in good shape these scenes that we've just shown i mean you have to be in shape so yeah. give the audience a little idea maybe so, it's you know a little uh secret of, of what you do to maintain the, the physique that you have absolutely you know for me i mean i i, I say it's simple but it's it's not because everybody's body is different everybody's of course eating habits are different mm -hmm. it, people it's just different so i'll tell you mine i think the number one thing for me that seems to to work, and that's um, kind of not by accident, I've never liked alcohol. Like I've tasted different stuff. It's never right. really uh, appeared to my, to my, my palate's never really just appealed to alcohol. So mm -hmm. for one, you save a lot of calories when you don't drink. True. Because drinking has a lot of sugar, a lot of processed, high fructose corn syrup. And if you're gonna eat a really big meal and be drinking at the same time, you're packing on double the calories. So that's one reason why I think I end up saving a lot of calories is on that. Mm -hmm. on that side of drinking. Right. Two, I drink alkaline water. It's been my friend for well over 10 years and I, I feel like it's the best for for my body, but for everyone's body. You don't realize you are what you eat, of course, but the water that you intake also is not all created equal. If you wow. get a, a, you know, a, a pH tester, like you can get little strips at a store True. and take some of your favorite drinks. If you dip that little stick in there, it'll show you on a range of orange being really acidic or purple being highly alkaline and you will just see what the level of the pH is in your in your water or stuff, certain stuff that you drink. So outside of not drinking alcohol, I drink juice, I drink 100% juice, and I drink alkaline water. So therefore, your body is always keeping a level of oxygen of oxygen, which mm -hmm. helps create you know healthy skin. You know you you want to have hair, nails, all that kind of good stuff. It's like I don't you know I don't wear fake nails. Of course, if I want to set or something like that and you want to put them on, of course I don't mind it. But in general, I don't wear. Um, I don't wear the nails and I try to do stuff as natural as possible. Like if I'm not shooting nothing, I'm not full face makeup unless I want to be, but you have to do things to help preserve what you've got because you only have one body. Right. So right. alcohol, I don't do alkaline water. And then of course you got to walk, you got to stay active. So as a dancer, I love dancing. That's my version of cardio. I'll sit in the house and just put a song on and for 30 minutes. I will twerk or I will do jazz. I'll do ballet. I'm just, moving because y'all don't realize twerking for 30 minutes gonna thigh. that's a good workout it's yeah. a good workout and all you're doing is literally just acting like you're in a club if you're in a club for 30 minutes and just play nothing but yin yang twins which is what i love to listen to when i just want to get turned <laughs> put on 30 minutes of the yin yang twins put on salt shaker whistle while you twerk i'm not stopping like that's just that's what it feels to, so, to, to, to so, so if i was to ask you what is your favorite hip-hop song to dance to oh. it would be that song Oh, I, I got to pull out some, it's, it's either my two faves, and, and they know this person because because I'm friends with them and fans. Mm -hmm. Too Short, got got to be Too Short. When I hear, which one? Hold Bl up, pin your back, get in shape, you're wrong. Hey, hey, hey. I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 shake that monkey is like, 
and he knows. Like literally, I, we could be somewhere, and I've been short so long. Good friend of ours, right? right. He'll be somewhere. He'll be like, "Yo, you know, you, you know, uh, shut that monkey coming up." I'm like, ah! <laughs> and he know. He already know. One time he even shouted me out. We went to some club. He's like, "Just go out to my girl Portia. Shake that monkey. Let me see you get loose." I'm like, "That's my joint." So wow. I like old like hip hop to listen to in that 2000s range when it comes time to dance. Cause if you okay. look at hip hop now, like a lot of stuff is a lot slower, you know, like- you Yeah, know, oh man, yeah. It's Tell slow, them. Like, I'm like, oh man, that slow, chased like, me, that, that chased, Portia, oh. that chased me out the club, girl. It does. You know, cause I used I, to I, host I up in the club and everybody Lorenzo, okay, when you it's coming hard. out of the club, I said- And you'd be like- oh, The Lord will let I me mean, know, the Lord <laughs> let me know. And then once the beats started slowing down. I said, yo, I feel like I'm listening to a long, continuous slow jam. A long, if you put like, out of here, Rick Ross and all the guys side by side, it's like, I love them. They're, they're, they're great artists. But for me, I need to get hyped. Yeah, I want to feel too. that energy, that little John, like how Nelly and all those songs that you would hear, it was a different type of record. So okay. for me, I like listening to those kind of songs because it gets me more hype when it comes time just to go party. And, and and shake something even pretty ricky like i you know we talk about miami stuff right pretty ricky that's r&b and that's hip-hop so i love mm. listening to them okay i, I want to know what you like know, better uh, yes. i, I want to know what you like better all right okay i think i know the answer to this but uh okay. what's your favorite ig or snapchat ig ig okay beyonce or rihanna Ooh, that's <laughs> for, 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 no, for, no, for, for performance, I, I got to go Beyonce. Right, right, I, I right. I love Rihanna, though. I love her music. They're different to me. I, I can't compare them, but okay. I would say Beyonce. This yeah. was, look, I, I saw this conversation on social media somewhere. Uh, okay. The Wood or Love and Basketball? Oh, ooh. I got to go with The Wood. <laughs> oh, Just really? Because, uh, again, love story, absolutely. Again, what are we talking about? Love story, love and basketball. Childhood okay. friends. Oh, they're in, in, in love, but then they go through issues because you're growing up and he uh -huh. got a man got a man so that's a love story the ultimate because they end up together and it's a perfect ending the, the soundtrack like, the soundtrack of the wood soundtrack cannot be touched yeah because again that's the soundtrack and that's the teddy riley soundtrack where you listen you're like it's nothing but him right but then right when you think of the wood there's so many different storylines that you're watching and mm. it's all of their stories. So it's kind of like it keeps you engaged in all their lives. Like he's trying to lose his virginity and she's <laughs> over here trying to, it's just like. The first thing she remembers. <laughs> like, I'm like, they had a whole bet on who was going to lose it first. Yeah, and that's we, true. It was that's just, true. Because the moments were so funny. That movie was funnier. Mm -hmm. And Love and Basketball was more about love and romance. I love yeah. it for different reasons. But, no, but yeah. the, the, the uh, parts where they were talking, uh, where they had to use the condom. Exactly. You know, the, the, the stories about the condom was just like, that's classic. Because so you've funny. been a teenager, you've been there. Right. It's been in your wallet the forever. <laughs> right, trying to convince the girls to have sex with them. Like, mm -hmm. get away mm -hmm. from me. Like, it's just, it's so funny just to see, like, wow, what you all go through growing up. Like, is a little boy trying to holler at me? Is a little girl? Like, that's yeah. what we deal with. So yeah. I love that story. And then yeah. I love basketball. I didn't grow up playing ball. But it's like, I can relate to the wood, like, over and over. Because we've mm -hmm. all been there. Cardi yeah. B or Nicki Minaj? Oh, ooh, we gonna do it to me like that. Mm. Ooh. Oh, Cardi or Nikki, Cardi or Nikki, Nikki Minaj. Oh, wow. I, 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 and, and again, I like them both for different right. reasons. It's me, a tough one. Go, it's tough. I again, I as a, as a performer and then as a musician, musician, I look at them like okay. Nikki bars. Right. Nikki bars are like you are gonna listen to them and be like, yo, she is spitting. And, but and, if I know. And a lot of her tracks have a lot yes. of energy. I, I'll tracks, give it to you. I, yeah, yeah, I give it to you. Her performance, like I said, so amazing. Yeah. But if I know I want to log on to IG and, and watch Cardi dance, twerk, and get uh, coronavirus, like, it's like mm -hmm. they're different. So I right. love them both for different reasons. But it's like, I mean, Nikki. I mean, she had she's had a long body of work. So mm -hmm. Cardi's had a long body of work, but Nikki's had a longer body. So I right. can. You got to go with someone who's been in the game longer. That's like Beyonce and Rihanna. It's like Beyonce's been killing it since she was 13. Okay. All you right. Know? Well, speaking of, so, speaking of body yeah. of work, I yeah. know you watched the documentary, Michael yes. Jordan or LeBron. Oh, come on. Michael Jordan. That, that's down. not even like a, a no-brainer for me. Did you Again, hear about what came out today? There's supposed to be I some, did. you hear about that? Some audio of him I did. recorded I did. I did. saying I did. I did. that he didn't want Isaiah on the team. And then he said that. So listen. <laughs> So here's another thing about me that y'all don't know. Every morning, my first wake up, again, I don't drink coffee. My wake up is first take. So every I, I morning, yes, yes. I'm watching first take. So at I know 7 a.m., you're up at 7 a.m.? 
that, 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 that. Mm. I'm up at 10 a.m. to watch. No, 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 no. My DVR tapes at 7 <laughs> by the time I awaken, <laughs> then I'm watching it on my DVR. Okay, all right. I, I promise not to call it. you before, all right, <laughs> to tell yeah, you what's exactly. on the show. I'm not awake that early. <laughs> But guaranteed, no, I'm up. So by the time I'm up between that 9, 30, 10 o'clock, I'm watching first take. And I like I can fast forward commercials. Mm -hmm. and I can get yep. right to me too. Yep, yep. I saw it this morning and I was like, my, come yeah. on, my. Ooh. That's not good. Again, if there's audio of him saying, yeah. I don't want him on my team. No, no, no. And then the doctor's like, no, it wasn't, it wasn't me. Right, right, right. right. It, but it, it helps out Zeke. It helps out Isaiah Thomas yeah. a great deal because he was looking yeah. bad. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, that when I first heard that, that's okay. That helps out Isaiah a little bit. It does. Mike's but a little also, stained. A lot of people are mad. Scotty Pippen is mad at yeah. him. Like a lot of the people are mad at the documentary. And if we're thinking about what just came out, maybe that's why. Because he might have took a little bit of the truth and twisted it a little bit. Again, that's no different than a biopic. Like when you're watching like either the new edition biopic or TLC, mm -hmm. when artists do their biopic and they're the ones depicting it, it's up to them to interpret interpret their point of view and their perspective. Okay. Sometimes people don't always want to show a real perspective or they don't want to give the whole truth in, in mm. something. You know what I'm saying? Right, but it's, right. your, it's your perspective. So next time we watch Isaiah's doc, you can clear it up. Give yeah. him a document. <laughs> he sure can. Give okay. Scottie Pippen their chance to do this. And I'm sure they can go right on their social media, no different than how they've said, we don't like it. We ain't happy. We're gonna yeah. find out about it. It's just a matter. But it was. Of it was a great documentary, though. It oh, was. It, I mean, ten weekend, I episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so since you we watched, yeah. But, well, since you said Michael, then I have to say Michael or Kobe. Absolutely. Well, I would still say Mike. Okay. All and right. I love Kobe. Right, Again, right. I I was young when Mike was playing, so this a lot of this footage I was seeing for the first time. Even though you go on YouTube and you can watch it. This was compiled with all just him. And you really saw just his level of mm. focus, his yeah. level of just beast mode. And when I grew up watching Kobe, being at the parades three years in a row, chasing down, you know, watching them, <laughs> you know, go from the Staples Center yeah. all the way down to the, you know, when they go down to down Pico and Olympic, I was there and I watched Kobe. And it was so eerie just to watch how much he studied him and how much, you know, he took his intelligence, but also applied it to his body of work. So I absolutely think they're way more in sync than how people say, well, LeBron and Michael. No, I definitely think it's more Kobe and Mike because, you know, they, I don't know, the way he was crying, even at his ceremony. Oh, yeah. Like, he, oh, it, it didn't take, uh, he was up there five oh seconds and it just. And, and it, it was a lot of work. And just, <laughs> yeah. just to be out in LA, like that was another time to be in LA when mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. I remember being right here at home in the in the bathroom. I just shout all this, and I always give my little TMZ TMZ alerts because, of course, you live in LA. I need to know what's going on with TMZ. I mean, I'm a host too, for for you know, for for right. God's sake. So I right. always gotta know what news is going on. When I saw that it just said Kobe Bryant dead in, in a plane crash, it was like, oh, this is wrong. This this can't be right. Was it from this TMZ? Was, was it from like, TMZ? Yeah, it was, it was wow. TMZ that broke the story, mm -hmm. and I will always feel so heartbroken for their family because. They saw it on TMZ before they even got a call. They, and that's, right. that's again, tough. That's tough. That's hard to take. Entertainment and media, that yeah. was hard to take to know yeah. that they didn't even find out besides seeing either on Twitter or Instagram or getting notifications that someone died, but TMZ put it out first. They're getting calls and texts. It, 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 it's sad to think about, but when you think of Michael and all the art and all the basketball players that were so touched by Kobe, his legacy is forever in stone and he is forever going to be remembered. Is of course, in a lot of people's mind, and, and even my generation, millennials generation, they think Kobe he's is the better best. than Mike. Right. Because he's the best. they lived with they they lived during that time. So it's like my brother was in my house, but then I have Kobe. It's like they are so neck and neck for me. But again, his you can't go to the final six times and win six times. Like he doesn't have a record of losing. And when you think of a champion, he is the ultimate champion. Mm -hmm. And that's why I give him that title because of his track record. You know? That emotion so, you just talked about. Right. Yeah. The change of our the, the, the tenor of our interview kind of changed talking about yeah. Kobe's passing and it just as an as an actor and, and you're an actor. Right. That that when you get a role right. where you have to tap in mm -hmm. to an emotion. Right. I know you try to do it as the character. But, of course. But but there are times like you said, um Denzel, what's what's Denzel's son's name again? First Tom name? David. Mm -hmm. John David Washington. Yeah, yeah. So 
he you say he writes down things he was writing down emotions. emotions right yeah, he's writing stuff those down. things yeah. to tap into what mm -hmm. what do you do or what training have you had that allows you to okay yeah. i have to be emotional in this scene how do i tap in where do you go for that as absolutely an actor? um it starts with you having a variety of training because on one hand if you go in for commercials you have to know to get a piece of paper like whatever this is like whatever i'm pulling out get a piece of paper mm -hmm. and in five minutes you have to deliver it like you've had it for a lifetime like this is you. right, right. your sides like, your sides is right. your sides you right. have to look at but even a lot of times in commercials they don't give you sides you go okay. you sign in they give you the structures in the room it's like all right next here you're mm -hmm. up right. so you have to be able to for one if you can pull on that emotion that has actually happened that's Great. amazing that's where it starts if you can't if you haven't been there you gotta fake it like you have. If you know someone else that has been through it, then you gotta pull on what their emotion would have been. So mm -hmm. perfect example, I was shooting the Parkers at this time. So I'm two weeks on set, I'm a funny set, Monique, I'm hair, makeup ready, and I get a call for a T.D. Jakes movie called Women Now Art Loose. So my that. agent is mm -hmm. like, hey, we got a call, they wanna see you right away, it's a call back, just we, we need you to go in. Mind you, I'm like, I'm, I'm like I said, hair, makeup ready to go on the other set, and I was off, but I'm like, okay, they want me to play a drug addict? A drug addicted mother of three? I'm like 17, 18, like, I can't uh, pull from that. I, I had nothing to pull off of. Right. I'm like, okay, I, I, I haven't even had time to do research. Yeah, I, I thought of, of course, Halle Berry, her first role when, when, when mm -hmm. she's playing a drug addict in her movie. Jungle Fever. Thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jungle Fever. I'm thinking, right. okay, well, what movies have I seen? You know, my aunt, that is true. One of my aunts is, is still actively, you know, going through drugs and stuff like that. But again, she's, I'm not around her enough to where I can pull on that. So I just had to, to pretty much think of what would someone do? A young mother. So maybe she's not as far gone, but based on the scene, she's in the crack house because she's just getting started. So she's not fully gone because she has her children. If she still didn't have, if she didn't have her children, she would have had them children taken away. So okay. she clearly can't be that far gone to where she still maintains custody of her kids. So I just played it like, okay, I am a mother, but I'm also that, that chick, but I just got to get my <laughs> fix. Right. I need my fix because I got to go back to maintain that I've got it all together for my kids. So I played her as more of a conflicted mother who's in that life, but still has to go back in front like she isn't. Mm -hmm. And I guess they liked it. They thought it was great. And I ended up booking the job. And I ended up working with the good friends, Malik Barnhart. Um, and uh, what's our, another friend? Uh, Gosh, he's an amazing actor. He was even in Friday when he played uh, Pinky. What's his name? My boy. Uh, um, uh, um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I did a movie part. with him, too. Oh, my God. I can't think. Our, our, our favorite guy. And we got to put it at the bottom when we think of it. Oh, it's, my goodness. Right? I'm like, oh, my gosh. What's his name? Um, I, did, I did the movie Clifton couple. Powell. Clifton Powell. Clifton Powell. Yeah, Clifton yeah. Powell. I, I did a so, movie um, yeah. uh, couple's night with him. And there we go. Yeah, so our mm -hmm. guy picks some towels. So it's a scene where it's like actors are in the scene and I'm down in the drug house. And next thing you know, he's trying to get a fix, but he ain't got his money. So a shootout <laughs> happens in this whole thing. So I'd never been in a shootout. I had never been a crackheaded mother. All of this was brand new for me. But after I got the role, of course, I started doing my research and started studying. And once I saw the other actors, actors I was going to be working with, I was like, okay, I got to step it up. So you have to really pull from stuff that you've mm. either seen if you haven't been through it, but you got to just know how to do it on the spot and that's when i think improv training really comes in handy because improv right now if you gave me a scenario that this is what you got to do boom mm -hmm. i'm shooting off i'm shooting off lines i'm shooting off dialogue i'm just giving you a whole scenario as if it's real and that's right. where i think a lot of people don't study as much as they should in improv because that is what people want to see if they give you one role i've had this happen you walk in the room hey we want you to read for this but then okay hey go back out we want to want you to study for this other role you got about this other minutes. role yeah yeah Exactly. It happened at a screen test to me one time. It's mm -hmm. a screen test. Mm -hmm. I'm already contracted. And they say, okay, great. Well, we like that, but we want you to read for something else. And you got to just <laughs> bring it to life. And you're like, oh, my God. And you, yeah. you don't want to freak out, yeah. but you got to deliver and give the best of your ability. You got to be able to look at a piece of paper and try to look at it and memorize it enough to where you can deliver it like I'm talking to you. Right, right. right. Por Portia, okay. that happened to me. I went oh. auditioning. <laughs> Wait till you hear the role because you were talking about it. Okay. I went in auditioning for the lead role, right? Gotcha. So they were like, eh, mm, okay, yeah, we like you, but we want you to read for this other role, right? Gotcha. I said, okay, fine, all right, so what is it? Yeah, right. I said, yeah, you're kind of skinny, okay. Um, I, said, I, I said, okay, give me the sides, all right, all right, so uh, which one you want me to read? They said, you see it right there on the, on the sides? I said, yeah, 
He said, crackhead. I said, okay, <laughs> so you want me to play crackhead? Now, crackhead had a nice little robe, too, you know, I with yourself. But because of my slender build, they were like, nah, he's crackhead. He's crackhead. So I had to take the sides, go back out, take a look at it, and they said, all right, let me just pull from what, what I've seen, what I kind of know. I've never yeah. been, you know, high off of any crack or anything right. like that, like, you know. I might be a method actor, but I'm not going to go that far. I'm so, not going to go that far, no. <laughs> so, I don't but, have time to go get some. Right, right, right. But, uh, but I know exactly right. what you're saying. So I came yeah. back, boom, nailed it. They gave me the part, you know. Exactly. So and that's that just happened. Out. Yeah, that that's does happen. You have to show your personality in a room. People underestimate what their own personality can really get them. There have been times where I forgot lines altogether. I knew I had them. Walk in the room, you forget the lines. And you can tell them, hey, I want to restart. Or mm -hmm. sometimes you're like, crap, I'm too far in. I can't restart. But let me just go to my best of my ability and let me convince them that I'm still the right person, even though I forgot the lines right here. You right. remember the lines when you get on set, but you have to convince them enough to where they believe. And that's what I do. You have to make someone believe that you are this person. And it's like, you, you only can do that with either knowing people that are like that, having been around people that are like that, or pulling on movies that you see. Like, I watch a lot of TV and a lot of movies because I have to. Right. Because then I'm like, if I get an audition for I got to go in the room and knock it out the park and not be like, well, what show is this? Oh, I don't know. I've never seen this before. If I at least know an episode or two of the show, mm -hmm. then I can say, oh, I remember watching that like a couple, like last year. Boom, I could pull off of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look good. I must say that. You look you. absolutely fabulous and you Thank dance you. well. You know, yeah. so I don't I'm think you had, dancer, yeah, exactly. You know so I don't think you had to go too far for this role and switched at birth. That was the <laughs> you didn't have to go too far. We're going to take a look at Portia Coleman and switched at birth. Let's take a look at that. She nails this. Must be printing money. What percentage of this business would we own? Ooh. Hey, folks. How? Aren't you two a good-looking pair? Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm Georgia. Have you two been here before? Uh, no, no, Georgia. This is our first time. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I love newbies. Okay. Now, I don't know if you know, but you haven't had the full Brandy Rose experience until you've had a private dance. And I don't mean to brag, but I am the best. Oh, that's nice, that's nice. Hi, John, how about it? You want a private dance with Georgia? You know... Oh, I also do couples. Uh, we have drinks on the way, but thank you. Right. Oh, oh, wait, I am really interested in your work. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, I don't mind, but I gotta keep moving. If I don't dance, I don't get paid. Ah, well, how about if we talk while you dance? A, 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 a private dance? Catherine. No, absolutely. Come on, follow me. <laughs> I won't be long. Yeah. First lap dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just enjoy being entertained. Have you always been a dancer? I did ballet when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, me too. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I still dance. Mostly tap. You know what? I'm thinking about investing in this place. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you like working here? Yeah. Money's great, hours are flexible, and I can go to school in the daytime. Ah. Wow. You go to school? Yep. UMKC. Oh. MBA. And I'm almost done. Wow. What's next afterwards? Well, I created a workout called Pod to Pole. It combines the moves of pole dancing with the technique of ballet. It is such a great workout. I bet. Can yeah. I see? Okay. Hit, turn. Okay. So you run a plie into a swivel, real sexy, and then bat ma, and then suit new, turn it up, and then hold it, pat that leg out. One, two, flip the head three, and you flip it like you mean it on four. There we go. Oh, nice. <laughs> We're back here. Uh-huh. I see you with her. No, mm -hmm. okay. Uh -huh. so, like, I'm, I'm just going to say I this. was, I I was wondering, know. hold on, hold on. But I was wondering if you were going to really give her a lap dance. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, and who does not love Leah Thompson? I mean, really, right. like, Back to the Future, all her roles, she's so amazing. I, I, I loved her and uh, my favorite uh, duck. It was like a, not Mighty Duck. It was like a duck movie when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But... That has to be so funny for me because I think I, I think I'm onto something. I'll just tell you why. I've been cast like a stripper like five times, and I'm like, 
So I need to just give up this acting thing and just hit the pole <laughs> or do something. Cause I'm like, that's so great that I walk in the door and the first thing that, you know, they want an actor. You gotta be an actor first. Right. They can fake you not being able to dance maybe. Mm -hmm. But when I go in the room, I audition like that. I went in in a, in a bra top, bustier, leggings, all that kind of good stuff. Like I was going in as a role of an exotic dancer. And I remember being there at the audition, looking at girls in jeans, looking at girls in Gotta sports bras, in, in baggy pants. And I'm like, right. they must not have saw that the role says right. stripper right. or exotic dancer. Because again, I didn't strip and take off clothes off. I was just an exotic dancer. I've never been nude in a scene, none of that kind of good stuff. If I had a bra top and bikini like I did on Silicon Valley, Mm -hmm. That's their TV version of a stripper. Okay, so I can do that. But when you're doing the dialogue, I walked in the door. What you see me wearing right. on Silicon Valley, right. the entire outfit I auditioned with. Wow. They just, so they just say, come back with what you do, <laughs> audition. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Just like was, that. So, yeah. so, so yeah. I ain't very much. I'm a method actor because I walk in the door yeah. looking like how they want you to look. And even yeah. if you guys go on my Instagram, there's one time where I posted a video where I have like pasties on. I have a black wig, pasties, and like these like these booty shorts with like these uh, these leggings. The mm -hmm. role said that the girl is a topless dancer and she has pasties on. Come in looking as appropriate as you can. Okay. That means walk in the damn door right. looking like it's going to be. Right. How about this? I found out that I didn't get the part. Two months later, they called me and said, no, we loved you. We just didn't think you were right for that one. But here, we gave you another part. And they created something for me. Wow. See, that's what you want. That's so what like, you want. So y'all remember me. Yeah. Even though I was, yeah. again, the only one in that lobby that was literally in pasties and mm -hmm. booty shorts, they remembered me because I was fearless enough to go in the room and, and dress how it said the character was supposed to be. Yeah, and you have to just go in there and yeah. just assume that the casting directors do not have an imagination. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you really, that, that's the attitude. You have to give them absolutely. all that you can in that audition. Right, and they don't. They do. Right, you have to show them to when them. A, right. Yeah, when yeah. a breakdown is created, when a, I hate when a breakdown says this, all ethnicities, 22 to 40. You know, okay. I everybody. Right, can you all give me some more? Right. That age range is right. everybody. So right. if they give a, a description of what she's supposed to be like, if you walk in the door, they're going to be like, oh, well, that's, there it is. Now we see it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to have them guess what you would look like if you got the job or, or guess what you would act like if, if, if the scenario was right. You might not make it to that scenario. So just like me, I'm going to go on tape doing it like I need to do it. And if I get it, that's wonderful. Thank God I did it right. If not, you're going to remember me for something else. And that's happened on several occasions. Okay. Now, I did take a look at your IMDb. And the, okay. the first thing that's on there, of course, is the, the latest thing that you've worked on. So you yeah. have to tell me yes. about this movie. It's a movie that yes. you, is it finished? So uh, there's two things on there. So the I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll let you, but you know what one I'm talking about with Mr. No, Fox. No, the, the, the movie, yes. So okay, you parts. go the ahead. The project that is on there is one of the last, and we did it a while ago, mind you, it's like two or three years ago. We did this wow. movie a while ago, but the newest project is not even on there yet because we've only shot one episode and IMDb hasn't even added it yet because it's a working title. So, okay. and I'll tie in the two. So the movie that you see there is Yes with Jamie Foxx, uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing his girlfriend in this movie, All Star Weekend. It's about- Wait, 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 wait. Yes. You, you play whose girlfriend? Jamie Foxx. Oh my goodness. It, there yeah. you go. It's out of here now. It's, you're gone. So, you're so gone. Movie, <laughs> yeah, in that movie, I'm playing his girlfriend. Oh my and goodness. When I tell you this movie is so funny, it's about this character's obsession and love for LeBron James and another character played by Jeremy Piven, his obsession with Steph Curry. Okay. So the whole movie is about their journey to try to get to All-Star Weekend to meet these guys. Okay. Yeah, that that was the movie I was talking about. That was the yeah. one I was talking about. Okay. So that's the movie you're talking about. So mm -hmm. all the celebrities that you see in the movie, some are playing themselves, some are not. And they're playing just characters that they cross paths with. But it's such a funny movie just to watch them fan out over players, of course, that they love. But they're not playing themselves. Jamie's not playing himself. But in real life, Jamie is an ultimate LeBron James fan. Right. So it's like, it's so funny watching this and watching them you know, portray this stuff on camera and the way we filmed it, it was so funny. When it's going to come out or what's happening with it, I do not know, but we mm -hmm. shot it it's in the can. It's amazing. But fast forward to my newest project that I literally started, we started in the end of February. Oh, sorry. I might've cut out. Let's see here. In okay. the end of February, 
and it's also with Mr. Fox. I am now playing his sister on a television show. Okay. Yes. So oh, I'm playing. Uh, good for you. Yes. So I'm good playing for you. his sister on a Netflix television show that's kind of like a story about his life. So this just shows you when you work with people, a lot of times it does carry over. Because again, mm -hmm. I've known him for a long time, but we've never mm -hmm. worked together. Right. I auditioned. I like the next person. I went in the room, had a call back. He wasn't there for the first call, second call back. Boom, Fox is there, and He's I there? Him, and was like, oh, oh my god, yeah, for I the can, movie. Because I've, because I, yeah. I know you, and I've yeah. been around him. He's right. a, he's a little older now, but I know uh -huh. when he has to turn that energy on. The two of you, the chemistry that Insane. is going to be on screen is going Insane. to be phenomenal. I can we only shot imagine. One episode. We shot one episode, and it just shows you how the universe works. We shot one episode in the same week that we were taping. That Friday, we were supposed to have a live audience. And we mm -hmm. couldn't because, of course, it was early COVID stages. But right. that Friday, after we did tape, no live audience. We still did the one episode. That Monday, we found out that we couldn't you know, film any more episodes till further notice. But we did right. shoot one from production to the writers, to the producers. They were like, this is so funny. Like, yeah. you guys are like, and that's the funny thing about yeah. it. Like, I've known him a really long time. So, like, there's nothing awkward with us at all because it's like, okay, first of all, I've already played your girlfriend. So, we already have that awkward. I played your girlfriend. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so perfect now that I'm playing your sister. I have an older brother, the same age wow. as Fox. Wow. And he's also okay. a Sagittarius, just like Fox. So, I feel like they're, two, they're like peas in a pod, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. him playing my older brother now at this point is just an extension of what I really did grow up with, with okay. an older brother. So this, for me, this show is like a dream and so perfect because Jamie Foxx grew up with younger sisters. So we treat each other like that brother and sister dynamic. He'll have a house party and like, yo, you gotta come through, what you doing? Come through the house, playing music, mm -hmm. DJ popping, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people cooking and go, and, and he got food. So it's like, like, it's literally like a big family, you know, uh, right. element when it comes right. to our relationship. So. I can't wait for you guys to see this show. I'm praying that sooner than later we're able to return back to work because of course what's going on, there is no return date yet set for any major studios. Like we're shooting at the Netflix location. Hundreds of people and thousands of people are employed by Netflix and I thank them so much for being an amazing company to be working for right now. But we don't know we're gonna be back. But that wow. is the project that's in the works that I'm so excited about. It's a working title, which is why it's not actually listed there. Okay. So soon when it's, when it's up, I'll come back Tell well, you what it is. well, Portia, that is what's going to catapult you to start so. because I, so. I mean, you deserve it. Timing. You have the talent, yeah. you have the ability, it's there, you have the drive. So, yeah, and, and you. we all know the other assets. So. Hey, hey, I you. Still, <laughs> we I know that. You know, I know, I but I know, I know. So and the credits, there is, is no other option. But the credits yeah. is long. So, you know, you've been it's grinding cool. for a long time. So, when they think yeah. you're an overnight yeah. sensation, no. No. That is one thing I hate. When people say, oh yeah. my God, someone said overnight success. I said, I, even no. reality stars aren't overnight successes because they were also doing something before they got on a TV show mm -hmm. to get famous. Right. So for me, I'm like, overnight? Fox wasn't overnight. Chris Rock wasn't overnight. Such an mm -hmm. entertainer. Uh, Tom Cruise, none of these people were overnight successes. If you go back and look at some of your favorite movies, I bet you'll see them crossing in the background. They were an extra. Mm -hmm. I bet you see them in a commercial when they had one line or no lines at all. It's like overnight success in Hollywood is like non-existent. So for me, yeah. it's like anything that comes my way, I'm of course gracious for, I'm proud of, and I'm happy for. But it's like when that moment comes where I am getting like that global recognition for being on a show or whatever it's going to be, whether it's this show or something different, I'm going to feel like, Finally, people just recognize what I've been doing forever. And my mm -hmm. grind and my hustle is not going to stop. Because to me, once you get there, you got to maintain it. It's harder. Right, so, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, it's coming, right. sweetheart. And I Thank believe you. it. All right. So, hey, Thank it's you. been a beautiful interview. I've enjoyed yes. talking to you. It's Aww, been very informative you. and right. um, enlightening, funny. And of course, it's just good. It's good to get back. It's, it's, it's good to get back together with you. You know, I don't know when the next time I'm going to be able to lay eyes and give you this. I'm just going to give you a virtual hug right now. A virtual hug. We're doing this now. And we have to, <laughs> we have to promise like on your birthday, we got to like either FaceTime or hop back on here. Okay. And okay. My birthday too, so we could, so we can share essence memories and, 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 and act like we're at essence. I don't know. We'll pull up the picture and, and, and do like a little day or something let, like let's, that. Let's Just try that. Let's try that. We, we, we will <laughs> do that. Yeah. Portia, I love you, you so much. All right. Love you too. Thank a until you guys next so much. Time. Sure you all right, baby. And say, and say hey, everybody. Thank all you. right. It's 100 Bye. Hip Hop and R&B FM.